Hello YouTube, this is Frank from Happy Coder. And today in this video, I would like to share with you a personal project that I have been working on for the past two weeks. The name of this project is called Odin. And what Odin is, is that it is a mobile client for people who subscribe to Feedly and Pocket, which are internet article clipping services. What motivated me to build this project is that being a very avid reader myself, I read a lot of internet articles and I personally have subscribed to both Feedly Pro and Pocket. But my problem with uh, being a subscriber to these two services is that first of all, I have a huge backlog of articles that I really want to get through with. And secondly, being that a lot of the times um, I get all these shortened or truncated articles from my RSS feed. At those times, I just wish that Feedly could have incorporated into their service a web scraping functionality so that I don't have to click on the uh, read more option to go to the source URL. So with that said, let's go and take a look at how this application works. All right, so now let's go ahead and take a look at the application itself. Within the project folder, we're going to first start the um, server. And on the other side of the terminal, we're going to go ahead and start the front end using the script npm start. The application is popping up. And because this application is built with the intention of it being a mobile client, so we're going to use the uh, Chrome Dev tool to toggle the mobile view. And because of the screen real estate, maybe shrink shrink it smaller so that you guys can have a better look at what the application is about. And as you can see, the first entry point of this application is the landing page, um, which walks you through the three major features of this mobile client. And the ways that this mobile client differs from other clients is that um, first of all, it pulls all of your articles from the two repositories and congregate them into a centralized repository. And uh, secondly, if you wish to, oh, let me show you the animation of the landing page. If you wish to, you can toggle the speed reading functionality, which is going to help you read faster by taking advantage of the built-in single fixation speed reading functionality. And lastly, like we discussed during the um, motivation part. Sometimes if you got some truncated article from your RSS feed, you can use the built-in web scraper to go ahead, go to the source URL and retrieve the long form content so that you don't have to waste time redirecting your browser to um, the URL of the article. So with that said, let's first go and connect our services. And on the login page, you can see that the Feedly account is currently being grayed out. That is because in order for you to be able to log into your Feedly account, I not only have to whitelist my application, but you would also need to register with the Feedly service to get your particular user account whitelisted, which could take a while. So for the purpose of demonstration, I just used my personal Feedly, Feedly account for the demo. And with that said, let's go ahead and connect our Pocket account. So we're going to click on the icon, click on the Authenticate button, and that takes us to the Pocket's OAuth page. And from here, we can click on Login and enter our login credential and click on Login, which the OAuth of the Pocket service redirects us back to our to the login page of our application. And from there, we're just going to click on this Get Articles button. And if everything goes smoothly, it's going to say, we got your Pocket articles. And with that prompt, we can go ahead and go to our repository, which is going to give us a list of articles, not only from our Pocket service, but also from our Feedly account. And from this central repository, we can click on any of the articles we want and toggle and 
send the article to the reading area. So let's say that we really want to read this uh, replacing JavaScript article. We can do that by simply click on the article, which sends us to the reading area. We can read this article from the reading area like a normal person. However, if you really want to use, if you really want to take advantage of the speed reading functionality, we're going to go ahead and click on this speed read button, which is going to toggle this speed reading interface. And from, from here, we can simply enter um, how many words per minute you want to be reading at. So that is going to dictate the speed at which you'll be reading. So let's say that we really want to read this article at 400 words per minute. We're just going to enter 400 and click on the play button. And the words of the article is going to be flashing across the screen at the appropriate speed. And lastly, let's say that, God forbid, you got some truncated article from your RSS feed. So for example, in this article, you can see that the content that you got from your RSS feed is incredibly short, which is evident that this is not the full article. So in this case, we would like to use the web scraping functionality of the Odin project to go back to the source URL and, re and retrieve the long form content. And to do that, we're going to simply click on this little horse icon and that is going to fire up the uh, web scraping functionality and scrape the long form content for us. And from here, again, you can read the article normally like you would on any other client. Or if you choose to, you can always click on the speed read button and toggle the speed read functionality. And let's say that this time you want to be reading the article at 800 words per minute and the application will happily oblige your request. So all right, guys, that's the gist of the Project Odin, this personal project that I've been working on. Next, let's talk about the design process of this application. All right, now let's talk about the design process of this application. For the design process, the tool, the software that I have been using is called Figma, which I guess is licensed by Google. As a subscriber to the Adobe Cloud, I could have used the Adobe XD. Uh, however, I just think that Figma, it has a very intuitive interface. The biggest advantage, the biggest appealing, the selling point to um, freelance software engineer would be that it's free for use. It's free for use for personal usage. It only charges you if you're collaborating with a team. And you can see that the main color color palette for this project is mainly uh, black and gold, which is inspired by another reading service, which is Amazon's Audible. The reason why I'm going with this Odin Norse mythology is that in the Norse mythology, Odin is the god of wisdom. He exchanged one eye of his um, for a drink from the fountain of wisdom. And I just think this, ana this is very analogous to um, the thirst of people who are craving for more knowledge. Because if you're a very avid reader of internet articles, you can argue that you sacrificing your personal time to read all those articles is quite reminiscent of what Odin did with his sacrifice. And you can see that this is the design of the first landing page. I spent a lot of time designing the layout um, the icon themselves are not designed by me. These are stolen from the internet. And just to tie in again to the Norse mythology, um, for example, I named my repository uh, Gladshine, which is the word describing Odin's Hall of Valhalla. And um, I'm naming my speed reading functionality Gonir, which is the name of Odin Spear. And once again, if you look at the design of the speed reading interface itself, it just puts more and more emphasis on Golden, uh, on Odin Spear. And last but not least, I'm naming my uh, web scraping functionality Sleipnir. And Sleipnir is the name of Odin's horse, which has eight legs. And I'm using this horse icon to denote 
the web scraping functionality because Odin's horse is evidently very fast and the functionality of this web scraping thing is meant to save you time, right? So to drive home this time saving quickness, I'm using this horse icon to denote this functionality. So that was the landing page. And from the landing page, we go to the repository. Very simple layout. We have a sidebar with two tabs, the pocket service and the Feedly service. And once again, I spend a lot of time on this reading area. Spend a lot of time on it. <laughs> That's how I have to say about that. And um, this one is the login page. Very simple, nothing special. I just tried to make the color palette and all the iconography consistent all, through the, all throughout the application. And because I only spent two weeks on this project, um, if you look at this, uh, the bottom bar, there are four icons in total. However, I didn't have enough time to implement this stats page, which is meant to have a stats dashboard um, telling, you, telling you how much time you have been using this app, how much time the speed reading functionality have saved you, etc. And... Um, I also would like to have implement a search functionality, which is going to, you know, search for the string that you input in all of the articles that you have written to your database. But these two pages just um, haven't been fully implemented because of the, um, the time frame that I was operating with. All right, now let me walk you through the tech stack of this application. Um, so for Project Odin, the front end is built with React.js and the backend is built with Node.js and Express Server. So here is the dependency, the package.json file for the server side. I'm using Axios to make API calls to um, not only the Mongoose database, but also the uh, Pocket and Feedly API. I'm using Cores to whitelist the uh, cross-origin resource sharing so that I don't get hit by this course error on my Chrome browser and I'm using the mongoose package to interact with the MongoDB database and this prop types is to safeguard my components so that I don't pass inappropriate types into my components that are depending on certain types of props to be passed on from its parent component and lastly I try to use this puppeteer um, web scraping npm package to do some web scraping but I ended up didn't use it because I found out that the Pocket Article View API does a way better job at uh, scraping web content that, than my personally written uh, web scraping scripts. And here you can see the package.json file for my front end. Again, I'm using Axios to interact with my server side um, API endpoints. I'm using this HTML to text package which is which is a fantastic package what it does is that it takes a unformatted html string and it cleans up all the tags all the attributes and it only leaves you the clean unformatted texts and i'm using note sets for styling purposes and the rest of the packages are just for the react front end including this react dash spring package which is meant to um, do some very convenient React side CSS animation, but I would argue that most of the tasks that you can perform using this package can be done using the vanilla CSS animation. And now let's talk about some difficulties that I encountered while developing this app. I would say difficulties, they came in at different stages of development. Uh, when I first started developing to get the OAuth of the pocket service to work was very challenging because it was a um, six-step procedure and because you wouldn't necessarily see what the OAuth service of the pocket website um, gives back to you, it was very challenging to make the authentication work smoothly. The difficulties that came with this, the mid-stage of development, I would say, was from me as a novice MongoDB user trying to interact with MongoDB and make the 
database conscious of different user login sessions that was quite difficult and the final step would be and the actual algorithm that powers the speed reading functionality it turned out to be the, the easiest part all I did was that I wrote a JavaScript file that takes the article breaks the article down into an array of words and based on how many words per minute you want to be reading at it calculates the time you need to set interval and it just um, set the interval of the react component so that uh, within the set time it rotates the word within this uh, within the array so that each word of the array appears only for the short amount of duration on the screen and that's basically it so it's funny that the most iconic feature of this application actually took the least time of development and now let's talk about going forward what I'm planning to do to this application obviously I'm gonna try to deploy this to uh, my personal portfolio site I'm planning to use Heroku to deploy the server side API endpoints and to use Netlify to host my front end and after Project Odin has been successfully deployed to my site, I'll be including a link to the application in the description below so, so that you guys are welcome to come and check out this application that I built with two weeks of time. Alright guys, that's all I have to say in this video. I hope you found it to be informative and I'll see you guys in next week's video.